back to another episode of Rebuilding Portsmouth. Now, in our last game, we absolutely demolished Liverpool in probably one of my favourite live comms. And we've actually done quite well in our live comm games lately with some big wins coming. And in fact, that was the first time we considered a goal in the live comm for quite some time. I'm trying to think of the last time. I actually can't. But before we get into today's episode, of course, I have a few things to go over. Now, I have a question for you guys. Um, there's probably going to be a straw poll in the description and probably a comment I'll put on this video as well. But just in case I forget, just shove it in the comments. Um, basically, I love Football Manager. It is brilliant. It's probably my favourite game just because of the depth of it. But I also enjoy FIFA too. And basically, now that I've got this new computer, I do have FIFA for PC and I do want to start making FIFA videos. The question I want to ask you guys is, firstly, is that something you'd like to see? Now, of course, I'm going to do it regardless because I want to make FIFA videos. But what I'm really asking is, would you like to see them on this channel or on a separate channel that I would set up specifically for that? Now, of course, Second Yellow Card, the channel originally was just supposed to be a channel about football. Um, the only reason I was only making football manager videos up until now is simply because that was the only game that I could even get to run on my computer. Um, whereas now, of course, I don't have that limitation. Hey, if they make a decent Pez game, I'll do videos on that. But the last one that was any good was 2006, I think. And I still have that. And it's still an all right game now. Uh, graphically, it's a little bit lacking, though. So, yeah. Um, the idea I basically want to do is like, I've got... I want to do some interesting stuff with career mode. I wouldn't be doing, like, constant pack... It, you know, it wouldn't just all be oh, well, team kind of stuff. I'd do a little bit on that. But really not. It's more to do with the same kind of stuff that I'm doing with Football Manager, with the stories and things like that. Um, I don't know if any of you guys watch a YouTuber called Cutsy, but frankly, he's fantastic. And his Youth Squad Legends series is genuinely amazing. And I would strongly urge you to check that out if you like career mode stuff. It, it's, it's phenomenal. A guy, one of my subs, I can't remember, I think it was Elus, um, linked me to it and it was fucking brilliant so yeah if you like that kind of thing check Cutsy's channel out it's great but I want to try and do something similar to that I also wouldn't mind doing a my player career but with like a midfielder or something because everyone always does strikers and I figured that you'd see a lot more action if you're actually playing as a midfielder but again that's just sort of stuff so if you'd like to see me do it on this channel and I warn you if I did do it on this channel it would not dilute the content in the sense that the ch the, ch the episodes of the channels not channels series i'm currently doing now with red star and pompey that would not change they would still be at 5 30 and 8 o'clock every single day nothing about that i'm i would simply be adding more content rather than um removing content i already have that, that nothing would change it would just be additional stuff um i'm not sure whether it'd be daily or every other day I, I don't really know or should i do it as a separate channel like second yellow card fifa or syc fifa or something like that i don't know the reason i didn't want to do it as another channel is just because it's more things to keep track of as i like to try and keep things in one place but let me know what you think there's going to be a straw poll in the description of this video which is just going to be like uh this channel other channel etc etc you know i know appreciate that not everyone that watches foot likes foot manager likes fifa i think there's more people that like foot manager that like fifa than probably the other way around that's what i would say um because it's a totally different type of game but i think a lot of people that don't really know about foot manager see it as kind of like this nerdy thing with spreadsheets which is completely wrong of course but nonetheless i think that's some of the sort of uh if you ever watch like when fifa youtubers do a manager a football manager series or episode or something they get a lot of hate for it which is surprising but there you go um so yeah let me know in the comments and of course on the straw poll that i will put up so moving along because i've spent way too much time talking about that we've got some things to go over before i go over the events of this month so firstly millington won the premier league player of the month because he scored six goals in four premier league matches which is amazing peralta was number two as well which is great with two and four peralta himself did actually win young player of the month as well and i won manager of the month that's my second manager of the month of the year so stoke managers won it twice Stalis Solbach and Man United has won it twice and I've won it twice uh, I'm surprised the Man City manager hasn't really because they've been banging the goals in frankly um, what else is there that's about it really um, I am now doing replays in close mode uh, rather than TV but I talked about that on my Red Star save earlier today because people think that's better so I'm just going to go with it so this month uh, it's been a bit of a mixed bag it really really has like euphoria and utter despair at times seriously it's been woeful but also good but injuries is the real problem we are having now it is so irritating so first game of the month was away at Chelsea and you are not going to believe this like look at that we won at Stamford Bridge with a goal from Norman Milling, uh, Sir Norman in fact, frankly, because of scoring this goal, he should pretty much get his uh, knighthood confirmed and probably be made a king at this rate because, oh my goodness, Chelsea battered us. They didn't really have that many decent chances, but they did miss some real sitters, like completely missed the goal. And Ma Martinez made some great saves as well. But the goal that we scored, you're going to like this. It was from a counter-attacking break, basically. 
Chelsea had a corner and oh they had a throw rather I saw this and I thought oh crap they're going to score from Aspen as a long throw nope 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 so eventually we managed to win the ball off of them and you'll see Norman Millington chasing around and I think oh and then the ball is played into this area Millington's busting a nut to get here the keeper decides oh I'm going to come out Millington first time strike bang 84th minute and he's laying on the ground hurt he doesn't actually uh, get hurt in the end like he's not injured or anything but yeah that was the 84th minute at Stamford Bridge and we managed to win 1-0 at Chelsea and to me that was just like right we're in the Champions League now there's surely no stopping us at this point I think that moved us 18 points clear of any potential team that could overtake us no chance next game though we had QPR and it happened we finally lost for the first time since the last time we played QPR and this game was an absolute ridiculousness I mean so much ridiculousness um i yeah again look as you can see we were still the better side on the day and of course uh we also had an injury to uh charlie Musson, which was the beginning of some really bad spells of injuries but look at this first goal this was just the most oh i saw the right there goes our good record because there's no way in hell we just cannot seem to beat qpr even when we play better than them which we have in both games this year the game's just like nope you're not having that. It, it just will not let us beat QPR no matter what we do. Like, uh, they had two shots in this goal. I mean, look at this. Ball over the top. So you think, all right, fine. Watch this. I mean, what the hell? And that was 1-0 to QPR after six minutes. Then it turns out that... Oh, and also you notice that the new 3D kits are now in the game. That's the new kit designed by uh, Adam Doyle. So seriously, massive thank you for that. Then QPR, ball in the box. Headed clear, back to the foul post. Off the crossbar and it's just put in by Sandro. Complete melee. Um... Two shots on target the entire game they had. We pretty much dominated the rest of it. And it, unfortunately, just wasn't enough. It took us until the 87th minute to get a goal back. And that came through Mr. Porno stash, Milton Peralta. But, oh, jeez. I just couldn't believe it after that huge run we'd been on. And playing so well in games. We didn't play badly in this one as well. Look at the stats. We were still very, very good on the night. It just wasn't going to happen for us. It just, against QPR, it just, it cannot you can't win it just seems we cannot do it we just lose no matter what we do even though we've matched their system and play well against a great strike from Peralta 2-1 and we still ended up losing the game though first defeat in quite some time um I don't know what Peralta's doing there funny little dance but yeah I think we also in this game let me just try and yeah I'm pretty certain that I'm just going to show you this as well because I feel like we also had a chance literally in the 90th minute of this game too. We win the ball back off them and right, here we go. Yeah, Ivancic knocked through here by Peralta. Millington's through and you think, oh, okay, excellent chance for us. It's played out wide. McAvoy's there. Watch this. Ball knocked back across and nobody's following it in. Nobody. They just stand there and let it go by. We could have equalised, but we didn't. And it was really frustrating because we were, I mean, just, ah, two shots on target, two goals, except one of those wasn't even that shot on target. Ah, frustration.com. And of course, we lost Musonda in that game. In the next game, things took a turn for the even fucking worse. Like, going away to City, I didn't expect much. But it was the fact I didn't expect Alson Hoos, Lucarelli, and Kenneth McAvoy all to get injured in the same game. It's just, when it rains, it pours, guys. And as you can see, we only had three shots on target in this game. The City were definitely the best, uh, as they have been. What about this for a free kick from Millington? Bang. And that gave us the lead on 20 minutes at the Etihad. And I thought, surely we couldn't surely not 21st goal of the season for him as well i thought you know if we win here suddenly that is really it uh, bear in mind with these two defeats it's pushed us right back into the uh the mire with manchester united they have dropped some points though so we are still only i think we're only off the top on goal difference at the moment so still right in there sterling's ball in a broomer with a header maybe martinez could have done a bit better but that equalized and leveled the game up for them and from then on it was really all city um we did push a man up into midfield to try and dimey them a little bit but it just wasn't going to happen Romero City are a very very good side they've scored 78 Premier League goals already Sergei Sampa then it comes to Bruma and it deflects in it was a little bit unlucky but still good strike from him we had a lot of clear cut chances they had four um, and they only scored three goals so wow he looks a bit like Jeebus Jeebus Jesus uh, they're Robson. then of course they got a penalty which I was a little bit annoyed at because it said he dived in the text uh, not Marshall uh, Robson so that was frustrating because that made it 3-1 three, three and I thought we were done for then. And I guess it's more frustrating by the fact that we actually did nick a second goal late on and that actually would have made it 2 all and given us a point. Ball up here to Millington. Uh, eventually it's going to get out wide to Rios and he just whips it across the box and there at the far post was Worley. 
to score himself another goal. Wow. With his second of the season. Uh, he got one up Brighton, of course, you remember. But, you know, he was forced into this because Wallace was still injured. Luke probably had to go off. So Wally had to come into this game. And it was two defeats on the bounce then. I'm not saying we deserve to win this one, of course. But the injuries, I would have happily lost this if we just didn't get those sodding injuries again. So in the next game, we had Newcastle away from home. And, of course, Jed Wallace returned for this one, uh, thank God, and then, of course, got injured immediately. And it wasn't... Like, I didn't have any choice, really. Like, we had no one that could really... I didn't want to start Wally there. He's just not good enough. And Wallace has gone down injured. Uh, Kieran Griffiths did start this one, though, because we just, again, had no one else with people just being injured all the time. We went with our uh, one centre mid, one defensive mid tactic for this game. And as you can see, they didn't have a single shot on target. And we had 28 shots in this game. Um just dominated from them from start to finish they are really really struggling in the league by the way Liverpool lost 6-0 at home to Stoke in a game um, which is awful from them too Griffiths here again that little bit of creativity ball across and there was Wally again the hero for us really in this one winning the game for us with an 86th minute goal same kind of system though Rioff ball across Wally at the far post who had to come on anyway um, and will almost certainly be starting in today's game against Southampton so Griffiths is back but we have still got a lot of problems that need dealing with all of this leads us to today's fixture, I think. Yes, it does. At the moment, we are joint top of the Premier League. We have 67 points already, which is amazing. And for me, I think we probably are, you know, still with 10 games to go, safe as houses, so to speak. Uh, Stoke are 14 points behind us in fourth place. And they'll pretty much be the team. Because Chelsea, as you see, have two games in hand. They have been struggling to win those, but they probably will in the end. And we'll end up going above Stoke, which means Stoke are the team we've got to outrun. Um, so yeah, we'll be 14 points clear of Stoke at the moment with 10 games left. I think that's probably enough and we will get top four. However, I'm particularly keen to get top three so we can avoid any playoff stuff. And top two would be even better. I don't really know what top two would do, apart from maybe more prize money. Fact is, we're still in the title race. We're level on points with Man United with 10 games to go. I do feel, though, that they will end up overrunning us in the end. Like, we had a six-point lead on them at one point, but we've had a tough month. That being said, we do only have... Like, in terms of our, our remaining fixtures... You know, Arsenal away could be tough. Stoke at home, though, and Man United, I mean, and Spurs at home, both of those are, there's still a chance for us. If we can get some of these players fit and get that kind of camaraderie back, and that, 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 you never know, there is still an outside chance of us actually winning the title this year, and that would be, I'm just going for it. Uh, most assists, though, Charlie Masson and Joe Wallace right in there. Martinez in there with the clean sheets. No one who's really for the top scorer at the moment, despite Millington's efforts. He has actually got 17 in 17 starts, but because he probably did it in. Morgan, I don't know actually. But it's on the right there for the average ratings too, which is good to see. This is Baz Janssen. Um, he's a a Dutch regen that plays for Stoke. I don't know whether they signed him from presumably from ah yeah Alkmaar. Um, wow, he's been phenomenal for Stoke this year. Um, Thirty million pounds they bought him for. He's been a revelation, and I think he's mainly the reason that Stoke are doing so well. They've got a great team as it is, but he is really adding to that. I must say. Um, still, thirty goals conceded in twenty eight games is pretty damn good. It's got to be said. Queen's Park Rangers have scored the most goals against us with six, and nobody's scored more than three in the others. And of course, we've put seven past Burnley and Swansea, respectively. Today, we play Southampton, who are not having a good season, and I would really like to beat them. I, I just really, really would. Because it's the South Coast derby, plus I think if we go to 70 points, that's we're starting to get on the verge of, uh, you know, securing yourself a place in this. I'm just going to see what we are... Yeah, we can't finish any lower than eighth already. We are already guaranteed to finish in the top eight. So we're already guaranteed with 10 matches left, a better finish than last season, which for me says it all about how well we've played this year. We've been amazing. So let's just quickly take a little look at the squad. Top goal scorer for us, of course, is Norman Millington. Burrell will be back in three to five weeks. So still, he might be able to play, hmm, I don't know, some games in the end of March, maybe the last part of the season he might be able to be fit for. But at the moment, who would take out Millington with the way he's playing? 21 starts, 21 goals. Assists, Musonda has 14 and Wallace has 12, but he's going to be missing for, uh, I think, three weeks, which is not good. Player of the match, Millington and Griffiths with four each. Look at that. Griffiths has had four player of the match awards in only that amount of... Uh, he's only started 12 games. This says a lot about him for me. Uh, yellow cards, nine for advantage, of course. Red cards, pa advantage is back, though, which is definitely a bonus. Uh, Lopez, Souza and Borges with the only red cards. Average rating, uh, Musonda again, but still mostly over four here. You know, very few players have actually got a rating of under four. So... Let's get into this. Ooh, so, none of the other big teams have played today. Southampton are playing that. that, that 
that's kind of the same type of system that Newcastle played against us and we battered them but I'm going to go for a more proactive approach with the two centre mids today because we're going to we're going to try and force the issue on Southampton they're weak and we need to get them uh, Warley will start on the right and Amrani on the left just because look at this McAvoy, Wallace, Lucarelli. That's basically all our wingers are gone. Uh, Rios is a little bit knackered, so him and Amrani can switch around. Thankfully, though, and this is my one sort of saving grace for us at the moment, Peralta, Ivancic and Griffiths is our sort of midfield trinity. They are like the holy trinity of players at the moment, with Millington being the, the king, so a separation of church and state and whatnot. But those, I think, are the key players for us. Peralta and Ivancic, uh, as well as Griffiths, of course, Lopez Souza as well at the back has been an absolute rock at times, genuinely. He's been so, so good. Look at that, 7.2 rating uh, in his last five games, but 7.26 for a central defender is actually very impressive. Two goals he's contributed to, so let's get into this. I'm really, really hoping that this is the continuation of the way we've been playing. and This will give us a chance to go back to the top again as well. I think we deserve it. I think we're better than Southampton. They've only got 28 points on the board in 28 games. We've literally got more than double that, I think. Uh, yep, we've got way more than double that. So we should be beating them. Asombolonga and Vieto, yeah, okay. Um, I will obviously, of course, mark Vieto out the game. Um, close down Asombolonga, but don't, you know, overdo it. I'll, we'll change that midfield, but Vieto is the key man for Southampton. Um, Tadic and Zahar, Melanda. Oh, wow. Oh, that's horrible. Um, yeah, so of course, um, I don't suppose... Well, some of you, most of you will probably know that Junior Melanda, that this guy actually passed away in a car crash last week, uh, which is terrible news. But here he is playing for Southampton, so his legacy, I guess, is living on a little bit. It's horrible to think that he's, I mean, he's such a potential. Look at that. Anyway, sorry. Um, yeah, so RIP to him. Um, right, continue. Right, sorry, I got a bit off track there when I saw his name. I didn't know he was playing for one of the big sides in this, but it's Southampton. We need to win this. This is crucial because we won away at Newcastle. We proved that we could get back on track after those defeats, but we need to get two wins in a row, um, I think, to get back on the winning road right when we need it because we've got some slightly more winnable games coming up and I want to make sure that we do our best in those to try and get ourselves top four. I think we will get top four, but I'm aiming for top three, top two kind of territory, really. Griffiths, can he have a go at goal? Maybe no. Um, obviously, I still want the, to have a go at the title, but I just think now that Man United have got back on top, even though it is only on goal difference... I still think they'll probably win it in the end. You know, in the long run, they'll probably win it, especially if Basto comes back. Then they'll start to walk it at that point. Taylor, oh, come on, win the tackle. Win the tackle. Uh-oh, this is looking a little worrying to start with. We get a lot of... There we go. But, oh, come on, there's two... Oh, my life. All right, at least you've managed to... Whew. See, we just don't look as solid at the back, and it's weird because the back is not where we've been getting the injuries. But now that we've got our sort of holy trinity back in front of them... Um, right... Clearly, this tactic is not working for us. Tadic's ball. Mensa, great tackle from Peralta. Knocked it forward, but Millington's not going to catch that, is he? Oh, he might. Oh, Foster's got... Oh, please don't let them just bounce this through. There's three of you there. Win the header. There we go. Oh, God. <laughs> that looked offside to me. He's going to cross this and score, isn't he? Yep. Oh, no! I can't believe it. What is wrong with us today? Um, I'm thinking about maybe knocking... I don't know. I'm not really sure what to do. I'm just going to give it a little bit longer. See if that was just a blip in the game. Griffiths now. Or whether we do need to push Ivancic back. That's good from Millington. Out to Marcelo. Can he find a good ball? Go short to Wally. Can he whip it across? I'm running. Oh, you should have... No, sorry. You've got to score there. You have to score there. And that's the problem with having slightly weaker players out. Oh, whoa. Jesus. Oh, c mm, Nah. Nah, mate. I'm sorry, I think our season might be coming to an end now. We can't go a game without the game injuring half of our fucking players. And we've got no rotation because they get injured when I bring them in. So who are we even bringing off the bench here? Um, Peralta's injured too. Okay, so Aston is going to have to come in for Peralta. Oh, wait, no, we've got Sam Man... Mm, no, okay, so Aston Hoos will come in for him and Mantum's going to come on for Griffiths. Oh, I don't believe it. We're goal down at home in Southampton and now we've just lost Griffiths and Peralta. I presume Ivancic is probably going to get his face broken at some point later on in this game. Um, we are going to change things up at half-time. We're going to have to. I'm going to go and drop it back into our uh, one defensive midfield position and try to solidify things with Ivancic sitting there. It's not really much good, but I don't really know what else we can do right now. Um, 
just swap these two over. I know Asen Hus is not brilliant in the midfield and he's going to struggle there, but what choice have we got at the moment? I can't believe that. Uh, when it rains, it pours, guys. We really have sort of stumbled through this month and I think we will end up getting top four, but I think these last few games are going to be a struggle because of results like this where we're clearly... Oh, that's better. That's better. I'm starting to get some more possession of the ball. I think we might have come up with a strategy that's working for us. The problem is we still need two goals now. The creative forces in this team have taken a real hit there. Um, we're going to push forward to a control... No, actually, we just have to go to attack. We're going to go attack. Try to push out them a little bit. I can't believe they've scored. Uh, they have had three clear-cut chances, though, to be fair to them. They've done well with what they've got. Um, we can't really make any more substitutions yet, so... Doesn't mean we won't get three more injuries later on in this game, I'm sure of it. Ugh. Come on, guys. Don't just let him sl... Uh. Uh, I, you you know when you just feel like they're about to score? I feel like they're just going to slip one through and knock it into an empty net here. Or something. Or we'll give away a penalty or something. It's bound to happen. Oh, well done, great. Oh, well, we want it back. Amrani. I can't believe he missed that chance, though. He had a real chance to put us back into this game right before half time, And it would have just... Mantum's going to lose it here. Oh, that's a bit poor there. But Wally's brought it down well. Brings it back to Mantum. But you see what I mean? We just look a little bit impotent now with our attacking. Mantum drops it short for Wally. He's gone round his man. Ivancic is a little bit further forward than I would like. Ball over the top. Millington! That looks offside. That must be offside. No, it... Oh, it is. Fuck. Damn it. I can't believe we're... A bit of a brave ball there from Ivancic. And yeah, Millington is clearly miles offside. Um... Shame, really. Right. Um, we're going overload. Because what choice have we got right now? Um, overload. What are we on here? Close down more. Push much higher up. I'm going to go shoot on site because we just need to get some shots. 15 minutes on overload. We have to, we have to absolutely thrash this one out here. I'm actually going to push Ivancic back up into the midfield again. Uh, just as like a like a ball winning midfield I know that sounds silly but we do need someone that can do that right now um, he'll do that for us we just need an extra body in that area of the pitch at the moment Mantum Arsenhus there's a little channel if you can pick it out here for, for Millington he's got it Millington around the corner for Omar he's never going to be able to <gasps> Wally oh my god what a woeful header that was from Wally that same move has worked so many times for us in the last couple of games and it's been our saviour but unfortunately I just don't think it's going to happen for us today Oh, I can't believe this. They've Lopez Souza, great. Asenhus again. We're starting to look a bit more dominating, but not enough. I just don't think we've got the quality at the moment to actually do that. Millington ball through over the top. He's and it's well what that's great defending there from uh, I think that was was that Stephen Corker or is that a different player with a similar name? And lumped downfield to Vieto. We should be winning that ball there. We can't be letting Vieto win those headers. There's ten minutes left. I don't see us turning this one around, guys. I'm sorry. Um I feel like we've not played to our best. But I still think we've been... Oh, Schneiderlin's been right. Schneiderlin off. Ten minutes to go. Oh, we just don't have any... I I can't put another striker because we don't have another striker. If we lose this with... Oh, oh I don't believe it. Oh, no, we're going to lose. I can't believe we're going to lose this one. This has really pissed me off. We, I mean, we've not been brilliant today, but Jesus. We've been better than losing 1-0 at home. Oh, we just can't seem to find... There we are. Portsmouth nil, Southampton won. And this is what I mean, guys, about our end of the season. We just... We can't survive this with all these fucking injuries. I hate it. Because it just seems to hit you exactly when you're starting to do well. And we, we were fine before. So the training... We haven't changed anything. And yet we suddenly get all these injuries now. So fucking irritating. Right, well, there we go. Um, we're still top of the league. But this thing is, Manchester City, I mean... Stoke can win their game in hand and go back to 10 points from us again. And it's it's going to be tough. And that was a winnable game. A massively winnable game. Now, come on. They're, with that, they were fucking like 15th in the league. We shouldn't be losing at home to them with the way we've been lately. And that actually makes it three defeats in four games now. And we're not scoring as many. We've got Leicester City at home in the next game. We have to win that. And then... We've got some tough ones coming up, but we really do need better results than that, and it's disappointing. I know I'm like complaining about the fact that we're second in the league, but when you've had a season that's been going as well as ours has, you can understand how frustrating it is when suddenly you just can't win and the injuries. Let's take a little look at Musonda's back, which is good, but oh, 
But the thing is, he's not going to be able to play immediately. Peralta, twisted knee, three weeks. See, oh, thank God. Well, at least Griffiths isn't going to be out for too long. Um, yeah, I bet they're devastated. I'm fucking devastated too. I disappointed. So, guys, um, where will we where will we be rejoining? It's going to be the Stoke home game. That's going to be a cru crucial game. So we've got Leicester City away uh, at home, Arsenal away. I want to get at least four points. So home win against Leicester, away point at Arsenal. And then we've got Stoke at home, which we have to win as well. I think if we win that, that would completely confirm our position as a Champions League side. But I just really think we could be doing better than this. Um, but you never know. Anyway, if you like what you've seen, please feel free to drop a like on the video. And if you liked it even more than that, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Portsmouth and Red Star Belgrade in your inbox every single day. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the Stoke City game. Bye-bye.